TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch, we are live. <laughs> you can come join us if you want. If not, that's cool. Just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Don't forget that you got the Patreon, man. This is a older list. I've got some new stuff on here. Currently having some technical issues on there, but we're going to figure it out, man. And don't forget, we also got the Discord. The link to all of this is in the description. It's in a link called Linktree. Click it. It'll take you to every social media platform that I have. Let's get into this, man. The Great British Pub Culture. Shout out to the alcoholics. Let's get into it. <laughs> My bad. JK. One of the great things about England is pubs. My whole love of journalism and debating came from just observing people in the pub. The Great British pub has been the backdrop for debate, conflict, and even love. <laughs> Conflict for sure. The Great British pub has been the backdrop for debate, conflict. I ain't never heard no debates going on, but conflict, well, yeah. It's an even look. <laughs> a place open for all, from geezers to hipsters to ladies' nights out. We all mix together as one, and that's how it should be. It is the backbone of British culture. Go to the Winchester, have a nice cold pint, and wait for all this to blow over. So today we're going to explore this fascinating culture. We're going to go through its history, its controversies, and whether it's going to survive in the future. This is the story of the... Pubs not surviving is far-fetched. Don't even believe. Of course it'll survive. The Great British Pub. I want to stand with you on the The British have a famous reserve when it comes to being sociable. Not going to this one. But this one, I'm in there. The British have a famous reserve when it comes to being sociable. Oh, and everything about the pub is micro-engineered to break down those about social barriers and to enable people to talk to each other. Pub is short for public house. With its origins dating as... Public house? Okay, didn't know that. To enable people to talk to each other. Pub is short for public house. With its origins dating as far back as 43 AD to 410 AD. And it came from the Romans as they occupied Britain. However, pubs as we know them today would really become popular in the Victorian era. There were communal meeting points that typically the working class could go to and enjoy themselves. Pubs fall into a few different categories and they have changed a lot over the years, but let's start with three basic ones. Firstly, you have the traditional pub. These are often housed in like historic British buildings. Typically, there'll be laws and regulations over how you can change the building's exterior as a way to preserve the culture. So this means there's very low Didn't ceilings and very low doorways because apparently people were smaller back then. A lot of the interior is made out of wood. There's wooden beams everywhere. There's usually an open fireplace and it's designed to feel like a nice, homely, cozy living room. When it comes to drinks, they'll serve a range of beers, ales, ciders, and they might even offer traditional pub food, which we would call pub grub. Now let's move on to the next pub, and that is the country pub. And every country village needs a country pub. Now, as the name suggests, a country pub is far out in the... Apparently, I'm out of my depth here because I didn't know there was three different kinds. Like, okay. Sticks way away from what they would refer to as city folk. Why this is different from a traditional pub is that traditional pubs can exist in very urban areas. The atmosphere of a traditional pub relies on its surrounding area. It might be a bit more fun, a bit more lively, and there might be, God forbid, young people in there. Whereas the country pub is quite the opposite. The country pub is more quiet, more cozy, more chill. You're drinking Guinness? It's like Peaky Blinders type pub right here. It caters to the locals who will look at outsiders with a, a little bit of scorn. The locals have typically lived in that town for generations and generations. And then we got their children's children and their grandchildren. And they still recognize you, still know you. So good night, Miss Page. Good night, Sam. Good night, John. Good night, Teddy. And then lastly, we can throw in brewery taps. A brewery tap is a pub that's attached to a brewery. They brew a beer on site and they sell it there. And these pubs... We got a lot of those in Chicago. ...tend to look a bit more industrial and are more used as a marketing tool for that beer. But for now, let's get a feel of what it's like to step foot into a traditional pub. Okay, talk Before to Before we go any further with this video, I want to give a massive shout out. All you have to do is go quick and easy. 50 calories. All these rest shop for an hour and makes the whole pro hand it over to fresh out. It's two months. 
salute. I know you got to pay the bills, but hey. All right, so picture this. It's a Wednesday, you finished work, it was a bit stressful. And so what do you do? You, of course, venture down to the pub. Which pub will it be today? Will it be the famous cock, the red lion, the horse's mouth? And so you approach the front door of the pub and you, you push open the door to be greeted by another door for some reason. There's always these two doors. Instantly you hear Mickey and the boys sat in their usual spot, shouting about some political thing that they read in the sun. Listen here boys, you know what I'd do if I was in charge, if I was prime minister? Yeah, what's that there, Mickey? I'd get the whole lot of them, <laughs> take them outside and I'd shoot them. Yeah, that's about right, Mickey. In the corner of Mickey's eye, he sees you as you walk in. The whole table's attention turns. Here comes trouble. You exchange nice at ease for a couple of seconds and then Mickey, he'll escort you to the bar to go get a drink. These particular gentlemen are who you would refer to as the geezers. The geezers. Yeah. You trying to wind me up? I'm not trying to wind. Seen this movie. Good movie. Then they went up. I'm fucking serious. These are working class lads. They could be anywhere from the age of like 25 to 55, really. Might be a plumber, a sparky, a carpet fitter. You know, proper man's jobs. They're not going to be in the HR department working in diversity and inclusion. Now, what's very interesting about the geezer is that the geezer exists within all British men. No matter how middle class you are, whether you shop at M&S or Waitrose, the infectious charisma and energy of the geezer will undoubtedly rub off on you at some point in the night. Man, these line of are going fast. Only reason I know about that is Danny Dyer. Danny Dyer want to be a geezer so bad. Only, uh -huh. Who's that? Oh, well, this is, what's your name? Steve. Steve, he'll be joining us. Why? Usually what's around between us? six, maybe seven. You'll leave your table, you head to the toilet, you might wobble there because you're getting a little bit intoxicated. And as you go for a piss, the door will bang wide open. Mickey walks right in, stands next to you, and he turns to you and he says, you watched the game last night, mate? To which you'll panic because last night you're at yoga and you need to now come up with a cover story. And so you will reply, nah, not me, mate. Mrs. was having none of it. You know it is, mate. But this brings us on to our next pub goer, Middle Class Michael. What a nice pub. Yes, it's a lovely <laughs> pub. Now, middle class Michael, he probably works in IT or marketing or something like that, an office job. He's come from work, so he's wearing his nice smart shirt, but he's, you know, he's undone a button, he's letting loose. He'll be somewhere in his late 20s to 30s. He probably lives in central London or some kind of city. But Michael, too, is welcome into the pub. In fact, all of his friends are welcome to come in and speak at an appropriate volume. Until about his fifth Copperberg, where he starts to find this feeling, this foreign feeling, which is appropriate volume. Until about his fifth... Strawberry lime? Premium. Oh, it's a cider, okay. Popperberg, where he starts to find this feeling, this foreign feeling, which is called self-confidence. And he'll start speaking louder and louder until they're throwing up in the toilet. <laughs> Next up, you have the old boys, aka the locals. These are men from the age of 60 to about really any day prior to their death. They're drinking proper drinks, you know, they're drinking stout Guinness. They all, of course, dress like farmers. They love Jeremy Clarkson. They hate yeah. young people. These are the main demographic of any good country pub. And we're here in Clarny because we've been invited by a very special character. I hear he's a local legend. Sam, how are you? Oh, my dear. But then you get a few little special guests, such as tourists who are typically American. They're wearing some bright- Chill, chill, bro, chill. You didn't, first of all, when I come, I will have cameras, but I will not be wearing that stuff. T-shirt, they've got a, a bum bag to keep all their things in. And they're saying something about how authentic this place is. It's so quaint, it's so British. And then you get families. Oh, I forgot to say you have the alcoholic who's sat in a corner murmuring to himself. It's a pretty sad sight. But then finally you have one other group who sometimes show their face in a pub. And that is women. It's so much fun. If they not there, I'm not going. Count me out. You get me? Now, what's interesting about the pub is that pre-World War II, to see a woman in a pub was a very rare sight. It was frowned upon. It was a cultural taboo. Do you object to me being served alongside you here, yeah. sir? I think for myself that the, the place for women is the, the saloon bar or the lounge. Why? It was kind of like that so that husbands and wives could be away from each other, so that men could do men things say naughty words. But nowadays you get what is called a ladies night. Now this is the one night that ladies have decided they're gonna go to the pub. They've spent three months over WhatsApp, organizing, arguing, falling out over this night. It's a big night for them. It could be a hen do, a birthday, and they will arrive at the pub dressed oh. in their skin tight dresses, drinking gin and tonic, holding their purse. They're loud, they're passionate, they're dramatic. You'll have one in the corner crying her eyes out. She's staring at her phone, texting away furiously. Another
mother being kicked out by the bouncers as she vomits over herself. <laughs> it's quite a sight to see, you know, an image that I'm sure the suffragettes... Hey, I'm gonna let y'all know, man. Once you get kicked out of that bar, don't try to go back in there. It ain't nothing you can say or do. It's over with. Have a good night. Never imagine would happen. Progress. And so what I'm hoping that you understand is that the pub is really a And so what I'm hoping that you understand is that the pub is re Yo. really a place for everyone. You with all your mates and you can all you're all having a laugh and you're all doing everything. It just it seems to be like the catalyst to make a good time. However, over the years things have changed a lot. Now I'm worried about the closure of pubs. The one more than 150 pubs have closed their doors for good in England and Wales. Oh, wow. They face a cost of living crisis head on. Uh, now, it's never been easy for pubs. Okay, yeah, that makes sense because of the cost of living. So when it comes to laws. It's been like this tug of war between the government and pubs for a very long time. And that is for the simple fact that alcohol is a bit troublesome. <laughs> in 1552, the Ale House Act was passed, where pubs would be required a license from a local authority in order to be able to sell beer. In 1830, the Beer House Act came along. New laws would pop up, like a legal drinking age. Also, opening hours <laughs> were pretty tight. But by 1960s, the laws were relaxed somewhat. So from here to about the 2000s, things were flourishing. Having a simple bevy with the boys had evolved. Now you could walk into a pub and there might be Things like pool tables, dartboards. And it's a five point round. You go into any good pub and there will be locals who are insane at pool and darts. They'll come in with their own cases, their own sticks, their own table if they could. And if they get. Yeah, that's a, there's a lot of that in Florida. Good enough, they can enter professional leagues. They can become professional athletes. I mean, take Phil Taylor, for instance, a professional darts player. Look at him, he is your typical pub goer. But look, if darts and pool isn't what you're into, there's something for everyone. You might be more into board games. So you go, you grab a board game in this box that looked like it survived World War II, or you could attend. I got board games at pubs? And a quiz night. The town of Leicester is the birthplace of which mass murderer? But really it would be in 2007 where things would take a massive turn. Where pub culture as we knew it would be gone forever. A countrywide smoking ban went into effect in the UK on Sunday. Ban the smoking ban. When smoking ciggies were banned from pubs, this was... A I'm not mad at that, oh well. Get over it. ...major issue in Britain. Make a place for the smokers and a place for the non-smokers that's segregated off. Not herders out here like bloody prostitutes standing on this corner, <laughs> which is what you feel like <laughs> when you're standing here with a cigarette. I'm not joking, this was as big of a deal as Brexit, Trump, trans athletes. And this is where the government had proposed that we were no longer allowed to smoke cigarettes inside of a pub. And there was uproar from landlords to pub goers, where the classic atmosphere of a pub, you know, where you open the door and a plume full of smoke would come out like a dragon's lair, would now be replaced with breathable air. And we couldn't have that. And it's true, it was part of the atmosphere, but ultimately the ban passed and you had to go outside and smoke cigarettes. From this point on, traditional pub culture only really got eh. worse and worse. With the rise of social media and home media, people didn't really need to leave the house to get entertainment. On top of this, the younger generation were- See, that's, I'm not, I'm one of them people like that's from, I was born on both sides of the coin, so. Like all the social media and before, like I need to be outside. I just can't be in a house. That's not a being in a house watching TV is not fulfilling. I gotta meet people. God forbid drinking less. And there's been a constant decline in pubs throughout England since 2000. It's crazy. Yes, boys, how you doing? Are you all right? Yeah. yeah. On top of this, alcohol is easier and cheaper to get a hold of from supermarkets. We, as society, have a greater variety of things to do. You don't just have to sit in a pub, you could go get a coffee, you could go for a meal. And so as pubs become less popular and the cost of living goes up, there has been a major decline in pub culture across Britain. But look, it's not all bad news. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, and that light is Weatherspoons. Today that? I want to talk about one of the great British institutions. 
Weatherspoons. Now, Weatherspoons isn't a traditional pub. It's kind of this like pub bar hybrid. It's like a super chain that exists all across Britain where it takes our favorite elements of traditional pubs, the way they look, the way they feel, combine that with incredibly cheap beer and food, and it attracts a more wider demographic of young people and older people. <coughs> I think at this point, it's pretty safe to say that Weatherspoons, or Spoons as we abbreviate it to, has kind of become a British institution in and of itself. I've never even heard of this. I didn't even know this was a thing out there. It's the start of every good night out. It's the place we love to hate. British institution in and of itself. It's the start of every good night out. It's the place we love to hate, but inside we all have a soft spot for it. It's still got all of the fights, all of the political debates. The owner, Tim Martin, literally did a Brexit tour around spoons. And it's even got love. Personally, I think as a society, tradition is really important. It's what makes culture so unique and fascinating. It makes people want to come and experience it. So next time you're at your local boozer, grab yourself a pint, take a sip and look around for a second and appreciate everything that's gone in to the Great British pub. If you enjoyed this- hmm. I'm excited about going to a traditional pub when I get there. Meet me there. Low key when I go, I'm gonna tell y'all meet me there. And if y'all don't meet me there, I'm gonna be very disappointed. See you later, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, I'm gone.